All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about inverse functions today. Um, we've got three main things we're going to look at together. Uh, one is kind of definitional, and then we're going to look at verifying, and then we're going to look at how to find the inverse of a given function. So the first thing we're going to look at is definitional. Let's say I have f of x and g of x, and I know that they are inverse functions. Well, that would mean that if I compose them in either direction, I get something pretty cool. I get just x. If I take f of g of x, and if I take g of f of x, well, they're both equal to the same thing. They're both equal to x. So that's something really important that you need to know. Um, if you're looking at the graphs of two functions which are inverses, then you will see something pretty cool. Uh, they are symmetric with respect to the line y equals x. And we'll look at that when we look at graphs of inverse functions, which comes a little bit later. And then the last thing that you really kind of need to know definitionally at this point is that the domain of a function is the same as the range of its inverse. This will come in handy a little bit later. And vice versa, the range of a function is equal to the domain of its inverse. So let's say that we are given the task of verifying that two functions, f of x and g of x, are inverses. If you see that word verify, that's really saying show that f of uh, g of x is equal to x and that g of f of x is also equal to x. So what we need to do is take the two functions, in this case we've got f of x being x plus 7 over 4, and g of x being 4x minus 7, compose them both ways and show that they indeed do equal x. So let's do it the first way first. f of g of x would mean taking f of 4x minus 7. So I'm taking 4x minus 7 and substituting it in right here, okay? So we would have 4x minus 7 plus 7 over 4. Okay, so we want to show that this thing is indeed just x. Well, we are going to simplify, but we're going to simplify it a step at a time. So 4x minus 7 plus 7, that minus 7 and plus 7 cancel out. So we can say, well, this is equal to 4x over 4. And we know that 4x divided by 4 is indeed x. Okay, so you need to show the progression of your simplification, not, um, well, I'll talk about that in a second. Now let's look at g of f of x. Well, that is g of this thing, right? x plus 7 over 4. All right. So I'm going to take this thing and substitute it into this thing right here. And so we're going to say 4 times x plus 7 over 4 minus 7. Okay, well, definitely we can see that these 4s cancel out, right? So this is the same as saying x plus 7 minus 7. Well, of course, now we know that these 7s cancel out. We can say, well, that is equal to x. One thing that I would suggest that you do not do, um, which doesn't matter how many times I say it in how many different ways, if you get to this point where you substituted it in, um, I am always amused when I see this. Okay, it's kind of like a mathematical painting where I need a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and no, I need a little more of this and I need a little more of that. I don't know what you're doing. Show me the progression from here to here to here, and then that is sufficient. Okay, so the last thing we're going to look at is finding the inverses of functions. Okay, and so one thing that you need to know is what is the notation of an inverse, and that's just f to the negative 1 of x. 
All right, so there's really four steps in finding the inverses of functions. The first step is we're going to replace f of x with y. Okay, and we know that y and f of x are equivalent, um, but so we're going to take whatever function we're trying to find the inverse of and replace the f of x with y. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch the values or switch the roles of x and y. So anytime you see x, you're going to make it y. And anytime you see y, you're going to make it x. So this becomes x is equal to 3y minus 1. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for y. So we're going to take this, what we have here, and we're going to isolate first the term where you see y, and then the y itself. So let's get rid of this negative 1 by adding it. And we would have 3y is equal to x plus 1. And then we would get rid of this 3 by dividing it out on both sides. Right? And we would have y is equal to x over 3, otherwise known as 1 third x plus 1 third. Now this whole thing could also be written as x plus 1 over 3. These two expressions are equivalent. And then the last thing we're going to do is replace y with f inverse of x. Okay, so at the end here, what we're going to do is we're going to replace this y with f inverse of x. f inverse of x. All right, and so these are your main steps in finding the inverse of any function. And of course, you could go back and um, verify it by taking your inverse in your original and composing them, and you should end up back at x. All right, see you in class tomorrow.